Um, all right, let's get into Housewives. start with salt lake so we get lisa and jen and whitney they're going skiing and i'm like why are we doing this again i thought we didn't like skiing in the first time was it because the I bunny hill like thing that. yeah okay. i like it they're in utah it's beautiful i like seeing jen ski down the hill and then she fell and like rolled over the hill like it was just funny it's cute i like it i'm not gonna lie this I have this thing with skiing. I do not like skiing because I went skiing one time. And low key, I always think about Cher and Bono, or wait, Sonny and Cher. And Sonny died because he yeah. was skiing and he ran into a tree and died. And so did what's his name's wife? Who was it? Liam Neeson's wife? Oh Natasha yeah. Natasha Richie. She did the same thing. So like, I don't ever want to like ski ski for real because of both of those for sure. They but, like hit a tree. Yes, and then the one time I went skiing with my cousins and my brother, the worst people I should have ever did never did that with. Um, I just remember going down the hill and I like went off track and went down like this side thing in between the trees, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna die!" And I went off a jump and I like fell, and then all these other people were behind me and they fell on me. It was like so. I've been, this has been years since I've did it, but watching this one, I was like, they did make it look really peaceful. Like Jen looked like. Yeah. Cause like theoretically, like, and then watching the snowboarding, I just like, part of me wants to snowboard, but like. Absolutely nah. not. Now see the skiing, I'll ski board. I'll ski because you got two legs, but snowboard where they're attached to one thing. Mm -mm. I don't like the idea that your like feet are locked onto the basically a slide to go down ice and snow so but shout out to whitney she was doing she was moving she, was and doing it. Uh, shout so, out to whitney. she looked really hot this whole episode who did well, whitney i thought she looked great this whole episode yeah i think i always think whitney looks i think whitney's always, beautiful but i feel like sometimes she looks very like inflated with fillers and like too oh. much makeup and whatever but like i feel like this episode she was just super classy especially when she wore the black suit to choir rehearsal like she just looked hot well you know why She's not friends with Heather anymore, so she can't get those weekly fill-ups. All those free injections. Because <laughs> honestly, Heather, I'm starting to notice, is looking real Whoville. Did Heather get a booty job? Oh, I don't know. I didn't... Did Heather, I'm like, I need to look at a fir episode from the first season. Because her butt is looking very BBL right now. And I don't remember her. She was always like the thick girl, but like her butt was never that... So I was like, girl, did you go get a BBL and we didn't realize it? Maybe. Look, let's see. Court, while Courtney's skiing, me and Ronnie are going to be right off to the side with our hot cocoa. Uh, nice and cozy. Because you know, right behind us going to be at that lounge with the hot cocoa. With a right, exactly. Beer. She going to be. <laughs> and then be like, I ain't going to go up on that hill. We'll just go. I'm not going to throw my big ass down no mountain of ice and snow. Are you crazy? Now, I would go tubing. I'm down to go tubing where I can lay down and be in the tube. I'll do that, but I ain't doing no skiing. I haven't tubed since I was like 14, so yeah. Oh, I took the kids last year, so. Um, all right, so on the ski trip, though, basically it was pretty much Whitney telling the girls how she's still upset with Heather because Heather pushed her out of the house last week. But I will say this episode, honestly – Oh, do you want to say something about that scene? Because I'm about to go to one of my favorite scenes. So what do you think about the ski trip? Go ahead. Not not the ski trip, the pushing her out of the house-ness. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there is too much, and maybe it's because Potomac is doing this as well right now. This exaggerated version of physical aggression, I do not like. So like... Heather was like, girl, I'm done. I'm not doing this no more. Here's the door. She didn't push you out of the house. She literally tapped the back of you and said, I'm going here. Good night. And walked into her bedroom and closed the door. You were still standing in place. So there was not like a physical attack on you to shove you out of the house. And I don't like that going on because it's the same thing that's happening on Potomac. And it bothers me because there is a difference between being like, I'm making it clear I'm done. I would like you to leave my house. 
I'm gonna go over here. She literally went into another room and closed the door in her own house while you're still in her house. She did not force you and throw you out physically. And I feel like Whitney is trying to make it seem like, oh my God, Heather went nuts. And she like threw me on my ass out of the house. That's not what happened. Well, right now Whitney's in her victim mode. So maybe that's where that's coming from. Um, What I did love and I mean, shout out for them to doing this scene. Shout out to whoever produced this scene. But Seth confronting John. You loved it? I loved it. I loved it because we've, throughout the years, I mean, and also another housewife uh, thing, with Joe and Melissa on this anti Teresa hate train on podcast at his comedy show. I'm it's just. Yeah, it's like. I don't want to. It's uncomfortable because that's legit family and it's very uncomfortable. And my like, thing is, is all these years you've been like, she's crazy. She's the crazy one. She, so just let it be that. But now that you're doing this, you, you are, look like the you're equal. Like it's equal. It's equal now. It's like, have you snapped? Do you want to be? Is this a fame thing at this point? Like, I don't know. I'm not here for it. Um, <clears throat> but. So the Seth and John thing, I thought it was hilarious, mostly because we're so used to seeing husbands on this show. And, you know, they're usually like super bro about stuff or they'll be like really aggressive. And I just felt like these are this was the most they are so normal and they had no idea how to deal with this. And like they literally said on camera, they're like, I I mean, I I really don't even like, bro. Yeah, this is really hard right now. Like it was just I just and I think I loved it because I missed those authentic f- moments on these types of shows. And I felt like that was so authentic. I thought it was yeah. cool that they did it um, and were open to showcasing that. And they basically said the same thing that all the husbands do. It's like our wives are crazy. So, you know, but shout out to um, shout out to John for saying like, I mean, yeah. Seth was coming at me he was like well look let's not act like meredith is miss innocent over here yes but also they didn't quite verbally resolve anything they just kind of were like yeah that sucked oh yeah she said that too that sucked okay should we go inside it's cold and i was just like oh so that's 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 the resolution that wasn't an actual like well because the thing is there can't be a resolution i know i agree but like also, it was like, that wasn't, that still wasn't resolution, but okay. No, it was just awkwardly uncomfortable, and I feel like they're used to that because their wives make them feel that way um, back at home. Ronnie says, Joe and Melissa are greater than uninteresting table flipper. Oh! Uh, first of all, uninteresting table flipper has carried the show Teresa is on the, the reason table. there's still a show. Even though I have not been team Teresa at all. Ever. I- <laughs> He was primarily the problem that's she but without her i feel like they need each other a million percent so and i don't like to see them in a very bad place like especially now after everything that's happened it's just like too much it's like you guys have been in this for too long the fact that you haven't been able to clean this up and like just like been like let's make money together yes both the parents are dead Joe Judice is in Italy. Like, you can't reconcile and figure out your shit. Like, and just have a. I would like to see Teresa and Melissa be actual friends and like be fun girls, like Nini and Kim used to be. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, then we get this car scene with Angie K. And I know Courtney is not a fan of Angie K or I these new guys. Like, who is she? Why? Why is she here? Why? I think it's just to carry this one little story part out, honestly, with the Dana girl, which, again, not that and interesting. Why? The whole Dana and uh, Dana and Dana. Meredith yeah. Being, why? So basically, Angie tells Jen how Meredith invited her to the spin class, and Dana basically said, you know, I feel like Jen was like bullying and like no one stands up to her and Jen does not like to hear stuff like that. And I don't think it's about Jen being a bully. 
and I don't think it's about standing up to Jen. I think it's about Jen needing friends who understand who Jen, who their friend is and understands how to control your friend. If you're going to continue to call this person a friend, and I only say that because there have been several situ- situations where me and Courtney have, I could say mutual, a couple mutual friends where we know who those people are and we know that when drinking's involved or when something is, you know, we know how to handle that. We do, but they're not like psychotic disrespectful i mean they've had moments well but i feel like jen doesn't have moments no and maybe jen, jen is jen, jen is just always the moment and i'm like maybe that's just jen because we're seeing what's cut for television so i will give her some grace in that regard that maybe they're only selecting those moments because it's tv and it's amplified but like but like then in- to see that the video of her screaming on the streets at that other person. It's like, well, this is just you, you bought that life, girl. Because also, a- those it looked like they were like much younger than her. No, it did. And I couldn't understand what they were saying. Yeah, I couldn't either. Screaming, so I don't know what the fight was about. But again, you are a 50 year old woman screaming in the streets of Utah when you're behind is probably about to go to jail in two months. Like, why would that ever happen? Like, mm. what would. <laughs> What could be the catalyst for any of that behavior? So I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know, Jen, girl, because we ain't got to the end of the episode yet, but you you doing too much on a regular basis. And I'm tired. <sighs> well, all right. So my ultimate favorite scene here. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Go. <laughs> my favorite scene, you guys. I'm going to put us next to each other because, oh, my God. Oh, I, I can't wait because mine is. <laughs> you guys. So. It was the scene choir practice. <laughs> and I mean, when I tell you I probably rewatch this, I watch this first thing in the morning. Every morning I wake up, I go downstairs, I have my coffee, I turn, usually watch Judge Judy. But on Housewives, the day after Housewives, I always watch Housewives. I wasn't ready for this. When I tell you, I, cr- I, cr- I could probably make myself cry right now laughing because it was so. The producers. Like, I want to know, were they actually that close to the choir? (laughs) Was the audio really affecting the mics? I just, I just, I just, Heather, 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 I just really feel, I, I understand, I understand your dad's dead, I understand your dad's dead, but I just need you to understand how I feel, I just need you to feel how I feel, Lisa, Lisa, I get how you feel, look, we're at choir practice, I get it, I get it, but my thing is, I kind of believe Whitney, I kind of believe what Whitney's saying, and I feel like, I feel like you, you know what, Whitney, Whitney, come here, um, um, I never, I never denounced that. I don't know why, Heather, you would think that I denounce that. Me and Lisa are best friends, and I would never denounce something like that. I'm just trying to let you guys know my choir practice is here. You guys, I'm just trying to, to protect my character. I'm just saying I wouldn't lie about that, and Heather, you clearly forget about things. I didn't forget anything. You guys are forgetting that we're at choir practice right now, and I'm freaking out. You guys, what about my feelings what about my feelings i posted your private text about your dead dad because my image was on the line the whole <laughs> <laughs> that was so stupid <laughs> i mean it was what? amazing really? television that was, not, was that real life like that could not have been real life like were they really just in that room that small room that tight doing vocal warm-ups while they're literally <laughs> screaming at it. But I always love on these shows how it starts off like, hey, like this was Heather. Hey, Lisa, Lisa, I know, like we have stuff we have to talk about, but like, I don't think this is the right set. I know you don't think it's the right setting. I get that. But like, my name is on the line. Like, once that happened and the humming... So what you're going to do is you're going to put your lips together and keep your teeth open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was too much. Okay. Well, like, in real life, 
conversation about the fight. So, um, I'm sorry, Lisa Barlow. <laughs> and I know y'all were coming to Heather last week, and I was the only person kind of defending Heather last week. But I'm going to defend Heather again. And this is why. I know that Heather is living in the, I forgot, I don't. I don't remember and people are getting mad and like, how could you not remember? How could you do this? I think that's all bullshit. I think that Heather doesn't want to deal with the stupid catty nonsense. And so her default is, what? What are you talking about? I don't know. And that's why when she calls them, she's like, I just want my choir. Go, you go come to the choir. I don't remember how we ended last time, but I just want you to come to choir. Cause she doesn't want to do it anymore. Okay, but wait. She's like, Wait, Just but that is kind of weird, though. Like, so do you think she genuinely... Okay, with the Lisa thing, no. But with Whitney, I do think it's a little strange. Because with Lisa, I, I think... Because I think with Whitney, they Whitney's had... fucking nuts, no, okay? I, I, girl, Whitney hello. I've like... ripped Whitney to shred every episode. She's I agree with that. But at the same shit. time, I feel like Heather proclaims to be this person. I give, I give, I give. And so... I think right now with Lisa, it makes sense with Whitney. It's like, if you heard it and now you're just running around cause you don't want to deal with the drama talking about, I didn't hear it. Well, okay. Let me correct. Friend, I don't think, I don't think that portion, I think she honestly don't really remember what the fuck they were talking. They were probably, they were at a game. They were drunk. I don't think she actually recollects specifically okay us saying Lisa Barlow sucked dick for tickets, like whatever the rumor was. <laughs> I'm speaking to how they were coming for her about- Which I believe is a million percent false. I do not believe that Lisa did that in any way, shape or form. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't guess, but I don't know Lisa. So maybe she did. People do crazier things for less. Yeah. So if she did or didn't, I don't think it's relevant. But in the end, I think that they were probably drunk talking shit about Lisa. And Heather is like, well, we talk shit about Lisa all the time. Did we say that? I don't remember saying that specifically. I don't remember us talking about that, but okay. Like maybe, no, that makes no sense. That's not something we've ever said about her before. Okay, so but why doesn't it? Agree. Wow. Here's what I will agree. What I do think, though, why I'm low key leaning more towards Heather. I don't like the Whitney and Lisa friendship. I think it's weird. Not I think it's like very inauthentic. I am actually confused 100%. by it because Whitney is the one riding the horse, <laughs> riding the Angie horse, and showed up with Angie in matching outfits to choir practice. So like, why are you, you know, Whitney's, Whitney's really, you know, changing and she's like really been a friend for me. Really? Has she? Cause she's no. out here talking to Angie about how you suck dick for tickets. Where Heather's saying, I don't remember hearing that. That's fucking crazy. That, but also it's crazy. And also I don't believe it. So I wouldn't perpetuate a rumor that even if that was something that we were talking shit about or laughing about, cause like maybe Angie said it and we like, laugh like oh snap she's sucking dick for tickets to the utah he, now here's the thing where i could here's what i'm saying i could see someone jokingly be like oh girl yeah girl <laughs> oh, she probably sucked dick for ticket like making a joke like that to where yeah. like heather wouldn't hear that and think like well that was not a real conversation girl like she no. was joking and whitney's like well i do remember you saying like no girl bye all right last and scene we got was Anyway. Jen calling Meredith to invite her to San Diego, and she was pissed that she was with Dana. Okay, first of all, this is why Dana don't need to be on the show. Dana, Dana, whatever your name is. She talks so slow. <laughs> I was like, why? Why are we here? We already have Meredith, who is like enunciating like everything very specifically and so excited that she now has time, that she's released all of her toxic friends to make friends and new relationships with people she finds kind. When I'm not in the bathtub stroking my husband. Dick. But <laughs> it's like, bitch, Meredith already talks slow as fuck. I don't need Dana, her homie, to be talking slow as fuck, too, to, like, do a whole thing. But, Jen, why does she nut up on her on the phone like that? <laughs> that fast. <laughs> like, bitch, all you said was, I 
I want to go to Miami. Come with us. And then she's like, hey, girl, look at Dana. And she's like, fuck you, bitch. I got a problem with you. And she's like, I don't like how you talk to people, Jen. And she, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And throwing the phone and running out of the pool. Like, girl. And that's my thing. Me. Like, if you this go to jail. <laughs> Bitch, you are literally about to go to jail. And this is how you freak out about minor stuff? Oh, and that's my thing, though. It's like... if <laughs> This is why I just think, honestly, she probably can get out of a lot of these prison years because just claim crazy. Just claim crazy. Because I genuinely think she's crazy. You know this girl said that you were a bully, so you're going to get on the phone and nut up like that? And know. show her to be correct. Because you're being a psychopath. Uh, Ronnie well, said Meredith and her sister were actually having an interesting scene to me. I don't know why, but I'm interested. What was the scene? I don't remember. The scene where they were talking about, so her sister's son was the one that had mental health issues last year that she talked about at the reunion mm. and i guess he is now succeeding in whatever program he's in and because he like at some point he drank bleach and was like trying to end it all but he's now like in a program and he seems to be doing better and the sister is like yes and he wants to help other people so he's actually expressing to his therapist now that you know he has feelings and when he has triggers and stuff like that so he's in a much better spot than he was last year. So God bless him. I'm her, I think her sister's name was Myra or Myra, Maya or something. But yes, that was I. It was interesting, but also I don't know. Something feels very contrived about it to me. Not necessarily that the son is like not hasn't gone through stuff, but I don't know. Meredith just feels uncomfortable on camera still to me, and I don't really get it. So between her and her sister, it was weird. But I'm glad to hear that they like because they had a bunch of problems apparently when the dad died and it seems like they have reconnected and are in a good spot and are working through all of their shit so I always appreciate that I know sister relationships are hard I've got two but that being said I also enjoyed Jen making the comment before she lost her mind and jumped out of the pool and ran in the house um, she said how she wants to go to San Diego because she wants a trip that's like fun where they just get cute and don't talk about traumas or work through their traumas. And mm. she's like, I just want surface. I was like, I totally understand that. Yeah, but they all say this and it never is surface. Well, I mean, but their trips, but specifically them, they have always gone on like healing retreat type chip trips. Like, let's go into the wilderness of the desert and burn our sorrows type trips. So I got what she was saying and I appreciate it. But it's obviously not going to be the case because we got the previous. No, I feel like, yeah, we're about to get like, remember New York, that Hampton, that, was it the Hampton trip? The Hampton, uh, what is it? Monster <laughs> Island, Scary Island. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Kelly Ben Simone lost yes. her mind. I feel like we Ooh, get in that. Back to New York, apparently. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Um, all right. Real Housewives of Potomac. We start out with Ashley and Can. uh, Versus Candace. Oh, oh, go ahead. You're not even going to comment on the Salt Lake previews? Um, Look, not really, because they did, like, obviously we're at the, I'm assuming they're mid-season now, because they said oh. coming oh, up, yeah. um, we're going to get the fights. It's going to be fights. It's going to be arguments. I don't, I don't know. I felt like the scene, yeah, I don't. I don't have to have this eye, Jesse. That's all we care about. No, I see. Here's why I don't want to even talk about it, because honestly i really she feel went, like whoever was on the other door just bumped her and it was something yeah, i don't she just ran into the wall nobody punched her in the eye no exactly and that's why i don't want to talk about it so let's just carry on okay we'll skip that move <clears> on <throat> <clears throat> over on the east side in Potomac uh, we got back to our burn session where Ashley and Candace were still going at it and oh, we're yeah. Uh, Candace came out to say, now look, this is the thing with Candace, though. I'm still on Candace's side, but in all of this, because I do not believe Chris had any intentions of anything that these women are saying. Um, 
But don't get mad at Ashley when Ashley says, oh, you don't like it when it's on the other foot. And you're like, oh, bitch, you've been waiting to say that. Don't say that when you've been holding on to the gem about your gay escort friend sleeping with Michael Darby. You've been holding on to that. Mm -mm. Not here for that, Candace. Not here for that. That should have been released information to Ashley when y'all was sitting at the table and she brought it up the first time. But you're both frenemies, so stop frying. Right. Um, you want to much as she wants to shade you. So everyone got up at the Michael Darby sucks dick comment, and um, Ashley tells Wendy that she just wants Candace to um, see, you know, that maybe right now your man is being a little too friendly with everyone. And I just think that there's something here that there is a, this is a this all seems plotted it really seems contrived and it really feels like the girls don't want certain attention and maybe it's because you know monique <laughs> lit the shit up like angela bassett like <laughs> maybe that's why i don't know but i don't I, and they're just like candace is an easy target um, I think the conversation about colorism on the show is in tr- uh, around the show on tw- in the Twitter world is interesting. The more I am watching this um, and questioning why this is happening to Candace and Chris, um, I don't know. We it's see- true because actually, like I think I when we first talked about it, I personally didn't feel the colorism energy that everybody was saying but i think for me i was framing it from a producer's perspective like in terms of because i felt like people were saying like the producers are shaping it so that the lighter skinned girls don't get the same you know negative energy that the dark skinned girls get and i don't receive that i felt like they were all ugly (laughs) and looking terrible and misbehaving and tragic (laughs) But uh, I do, I I had a rethink moment about it from the perspective of the actual castmates and them feeling colorism from each other and enacting their energies of colorism on each other. And like the way that, you know, Ashley describes Candace versus the way she will describe Robin. And there are definitely like moments where I can see that possibly being the case. Mm -hmm. But in the end, again, like it, I still revert back to as a show as a whole, I feel like they're all shown to be ugly people right now and not the greatest of people. Like nobody on Potomac, I think is like seeming like a super redeemable, like, person that i'm rooting for as a character or as a person i mean personally the only one would be i feel like the only one that's trying to keep some sort of head on her shoulders and she just can't because sharice is (laughs) just sharice's presence is unraveling her is karen i feel like karen is trying to be that but it it feels but karen has shown herself to not be that many a times in the past so I feel like they all have ugly energy. Uh, I don't know. PM616 says, I definitely see it as colorism. The way the darker skinned women are treated by lighter skin cast is apparent. Um, you know, what's interesting about this too is, um, look, Wendy to me, low key insufferable. Like I, I, I think she digs her own grays, but Candace- I will say- you're talking about Wendy. Wendy did an interview on What's His Face's podcast, uh, Carlos's Carlos podcast. King. And I I feel the same way. Like what you just said, I totally felt the same way about Wendy. I have a little more grace from her after hearing her on Carlos's podcast. What was her overall take? I mean, the, the overall take was she, because she didn't do this because Funky Dineva also, inter- no, that was somebody else. Sorry. He basically she took responsibility and ownership of the fact that she's been multiple people over the course of her three seasons 
And it's not strange that people are like confused about like, well, who are you, Wendy? Like, are you the like, I'm the professor, I'm the this, am I like a candle maker? Are you just doing this for attention? Like, what are you doing? And she kind of went into like how literally when we met her, she had just given birth to her last child. Everything she had done in her adult life up until that point, other than choosing her own husband, was not a choice she made on her own. Mm -hmm. It was all a choice she made with her mother and her sister as a child of an immigrant who decided to do whatever. And then the choice to be on Housewives was like her own choice. And like trying to explore, she felt like she's like, she's like, I feel like I'm a rebellious teenager, finally in a spot where I can like try other things that I had not thought about. And like, I wanted to feel good about myself and I wanted boobs. So I went and got them. And like, you guys were seeing me in real time as a 35 plus year old woman figuring out my adultness as an individual, not as my mother's child. Okay. So I feel like, okay, that makes sense because literally she didn't try to shy away and be like, no, I am all of this and I am all that. She's like, no, I'm actually like figuring out like I was that cause that's what I was trained to do. But like I had feelings to do other things and be other ways and whatever. And I just never explored those. And you guys are actually watching me explore those at the same time. So it's like, okay, girl, maybe. I can give it that. I mean, uh, first of all, Ronnie, um, no, I did not say Karen was authentic. I said I feel like how she's coming across is actually inauthentic. But oh wow! <laughs> but what I said was, I think out of all the girls, Karen is trying to keep like all the girls are being nasty, like really nasty, and I feel like Karen is trying to keep a presence, like how Wendy does. I believe Robin, like uh, PM six one six says. The vitriol that Robin has towards Wendy is crazy to me. I believe with I'm here's my theory. I think Robin's thing with Wendy is an internal thing. Um, I don't know if it is skin related, but what I would more so say it's family related. I think she looks at someone like Wendy who has a husband, kids. She has a supportive husband who she can go do all these different things. And Robin is like sweating coming out of big lots, like trying to get the, you know, park together for everyone to come because it's her trip. It's her, it's her time to host something, you know? So Robin's just like, where's Juan and Juan's dealing with this whole lawsuit. And she's going to a divorce attorney about a prenup and you know, all this stuff. So I think, and again, I do know certain girls, and that does that isn't to say Wendy's bad or anything like that. What it is is that I think that Wendy came from a bubble, like mm -hmm. Courtney just said, her mom, her sister, and some people can get jealous of stuff like that. Like when you come from family, you know, it's like it's so funny. I always would have this one thing. It was like I remember this one person was talking about oh your mom gave you money for something this is years ago right and she was like oh he was like your mom gave you money and i was like you have a sugar daddy but he was mad at me that my own family helped me out with a situation but you going out getting sugar daddies and he just had this hatred it was because he didn't come from a family and he didn't have a good situation with his mother and so I could see that being the issue. Maybe color comes into it as well, but I, I more so think that's Robin's issue with Wendy specifically. Because when you think of all the other girls, like Candace has an issue. Candace has a man, but she can't have a baby. Ashley is dating. Is he gay? Is he straight? Who knows what he's doing? You know, Giselle don't got a man. Karen, it's like, <laughs> that's Karen. <laughs> so really, Wendy is the only one who kind of has that package, right? So I question if that's what Robin's thing is. I, I wouldn't be interested to see uh, what you guys think of that. Uh, PM said, I can definitely see that Jesse Robin's issue with Wendy seems misdirected. Um Ronnie said, what are your thoughts on Wendy's appearance on Watch What Happens Live? I did not see that. I didn't see, I don't think I caught her on Watch What Happens either. Uh, did she say anything that, you know, important? Dustin said, I think Robin's very loyal and doesn't like that Wendy turned on her because of her support of Giselle. 
PM16 said, same with Giselle. She's always attacking people's marriages because she doesn't have slash keep a man. Million percent. Again, I think in real life, I mean, I've met Giselle and she's really cool. I think I would be friends out of all the girls. I think I would be friends with Giselle personally. Me too. But and I, I think it's just for show. A million percent. But also I think if Giselle had a man, she's. I think when Giselle has a man, she's a different Giselle. I don't think she's, you know, she likes probably likes the tea and all that kind of stuff. But like to actually be infiltrating in people's lives like this, no. I think if she had a man on the show, it wouldn't be like that. See, I don't know. I think it still would be because I think that Giselle, even though like they don't like to be like, oh, she's, you know, one of the producers of the show. I think she knows and has figured out what makes the show tick. And she's willing to, again, like I said before, in normal life, she would never maybe vocalize the things that she's vocalizing. But I do think she's a very direct, honest person. So she just overdoes it and doesn't filter herself because it keeps the show wheels. Wait, tight. I have to have an honest moment. She's a producer on the show. No, what I'm saying is like they don't like to call like certain cast members. The, oh, like, OK. She's like the Kyle of Beverly yes, Hills. Exactly. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she okay. Understands one of she's one of the people that understands what makes the show. And continue. I think what, what she understood this season was, y'all, let's put let's get Candace and let's not even give Candace a real reason because that's what's really gonna kill kill Candace. Because when Candace went out to talk to Giselle, this conversation and again I'm just looking at Giselle like, girl, why would you even go out there to have that conversation if that's how you're gonna end it? Because it keeps, now the story keeps becoming more like, girl, it wasn't even that big a deal. He just did it. Girl, it wasn't even that big a deal. That's why I don't think it was actually a like, girls, let's get Candace. She won't even be ready for it. I feel like it's, this shit was weird to me. And normally I wouldn't say shit, but we on a show, so I'm going to say shit. And I know it's going to turn up because Candace turns up because that's mm -hmm. how she is. But we on a show, I'm going to say it. Girl, guess what? Your man kind of weird and doing some weird shit. And then letting it all pile on. Because I feel like they maybe even talked like, oh, yeah, by the way, he did kind of look at me a little strange for such and such. And Giselle is just like, well, I'll die on the cross because we need a show. Girl, I really did feel this. And it was a little weird to me. And I probably shouldn't bring it up like in normal life. But we on TV. So I'm bringing it up. Like, I don't feel like it was like, let's get Candace. We don't like her. Let's make it hard for... I don't think it's like that at all. I feel like she has honest moments that are fucking... Like, we all have honest shit that's weird that we were like, eh, I might not say nothing about that or I'm not going to tell someone. So, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, I felt so crazy that the Uber driver did da 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 but I'm on a TV show. It makes sense for me to say it because that's going to push story. Uh, Ronnie says, unfortunately, I feel like Candace is giving it more light than necessary. A hundred percent. I mean, but is she? Because Ashley keeps yes. bringing it up. No, 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 no. Candace freaking out about it is what makes it an issue. Because like they were saying how Candace is like taking it home to her man and dramatizing it even further and making because even when she's talking to Giselle and she's like, yeah, but you guys oh, come on. Cool. You don't know what you would be like on national television if you know how we all know how production works i'm sorry we know how production works i think that was such an authentic i i loved i really did love the first scene when can when giselle said that and candace's reaction because i think for i don't want to say the first time but i think in a very long time it was a moment where we saw someone break that wall and it was like what's happening here like is this a part of the story like are y'all really trying to make this a thing are you trying to make this a storyline like we're sitting down we're having like a moment where you can like come and confess this to me like that would piss me off too if my husband has who knows what he's done for them and cooked for them or done events for them whatever the case is or whatever that would frustrate me and i mean all these all these girls have turned up before so like Ro Robin got up, turned up on Wendy and ran out. So what's the difference? It's not about, let, let's all be real. Like I, we've said multiple times, like this is the first season that everybody's kind of like next level empathizing with Candace in a way we haven't before. Right. Because Candace's turnups in the past have been seemingly 
immature, bratty, un, uh, overly extra, mm-hmm. like, and unnecessary. And I think that they know that that's how she is, period. So if they bring anything up, regardless of how big or small it is, she's going to do that because she's not emotionally mature in that way. And I think she's taking the information back to her husband, turning it up. He's on Twitter doing even more to make it even go further. They probably expected that that would be the case because they know Candace better than we know her. But if Candace had given them dust about it, it would have died. Right. But she's not going to give them dust because that's not her personality. Uh, Ronnie says there's a rumor that he isn't exactly monogamous and maybe just maybe she's trying to take all attention off Chris just in case. I don't think she's doing that. I think that rumor is a rumor. But I think if it was really true, I mean, we know how this show works. I would assume by now we would see text messages. The girl would have came out. Whoever would have came out with a video. I just feel like that would have been exposed and happened and again i really don't see that for him i don't know him to know that but i just i don't get that personally um, i don't get it either and maybe again, who knows but people be doing stuff to surprise us all the time and you know you get a little smoke from being on tv you think you're invincible sometimes especially men men do dumb shit y'all sorry no offense love y'all ronnie pm i don't know if pm is the I don't know, Dustin. All I love y'all as men, but men do dumb shit, especially straight men, and think they're gonna get away with it or don't even think one way or the other. So, if he is doing something wild, I wouldn't be shocked. But he doesn't give me that. He seems like yeah. he really loves. And my thing is, and I, again, I do wish Candace could come with. See, this is like I would love to see Phaedra being put in this position because yes. she would just ka-ching, 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 everybody like for Giselle to sit across from you said what? No, I'm just saying like if Candace had been like because Candace asked like so instead of Candace being like because she went after Giselle like you are inferring that there's malintent. You could have shut it down literally by saying, oh, my gosh. I am so sorry you felt that way, but I am certain that my husband never had any malintent towards you. He loves you like a sister, but I will talk to him and that will never happen again. It would have been squashed in that moment, period. That or throw a little shade back and say, you know what, girl, I'm so sorry you, I, I, you know, I don't want you to ever feel like that, especially coming from my man. Um, Can I ask what made you feel so comfortable saying yes to him and going to your room and not just saying, hey, could we go over here and sit down? Like, I don't feel comfortable going with a married man versus you walking to the room and then having that conversation then? But then you even said we shouldn't be in here and he walked out. He was like, you're right. Open the door. So how did that not shift the energy? Regardless, there's a million iterations of what Candace could have said to squash this flame right she chose to ignite it and just and i'll know she's not going to say that and she's just going to give them heat and that's what they want she's gonna continue to squeeze the what do you call it igniting what do you call that stuff the kerosene the stuff you squirt on the flame um ashley then we find out who the girl is that is rumored Poor to that he flirted with and her name is deborah which I hate that name. No offense to anyone named Deborah, but um, so we'll see what goes on with that. Uh, we see Ashley at the divorce Dude, attorney. That's my mom's name. Okay, but like it gives me mom. Like I just feel like there's certain like years. Like we just have to stop calling certain people things. Like I just don't see in like the year three thousand twenty five <laughs> like Deborahs. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like I just feel like we're gonna like. I don't know. Um, Ashley and this divorce attorney, she doesn't want to. She basically said she doesn't want to sleep with anyone else. She explained why they're breaking up. Um, and she brought up basically how Michael does not want to bring attorneys into this. And her attorney was like, um, he makes all the money. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> you, you want to bring an attorney in on this. But Ashley then walked out and was like, yeah, no, I trust him, hopefully, and we'll see what happens. So we'll see what happens with Mr. Darby. I mean, I just feel like she's got something on him or I don't know. Their situation is so interesting to me. And I, I mean, it seems like. 
I feel like I mean, it was like a sugar daddy. Honestly, like I feel like it was like a set up situation. Yeah. Like, not a sugar daddy, but because they were on TV, they played a role. They did it, followed it through. I mean, we see it on 90 Day Fiance all the time. And she got what she really wanted out of the situation and show's over. She married him, stayed married for the eight years so that the prenup expired or whatever so that she would get whatever was mutual property in the last eight years and i don't know i just don't i don't understand why michael would do it because it didn't do anything but make him look bad yeah i don't know either i mean maybe just not knowing what was gonna happen i don't know being on a show maybe he never watched housewives because he don't seem like someone who would sit and watch an episode um all right let's just we got a scene of wendy journaling she's thankful for her mom out the hospital moving on uh we get (laughs) mia and sharice they're talking about miami and how mia got uh a six bedroom house and everyone it's for nine girls. And she said, you know, I think Sharice, I'm gonna let you pick your own room. Sharice was super excited about it. Um, then we got a clip of Giselle, Ashley and Robin shopping for Miami and Robin confirms, uh, that she did hear Candace, that Candace did tell her about that escort rumor, uh, a while ago, which also mm-hmm. interesting, Robin, you kept that quiet, but, and, and the fact you kept that quiet from Giselle or Giselle knew it and was like, mm, not my tea to spill. Uh, then we get yeah. to the airport and we get these SUVs. And I thought the way these SUVs were split was very interesting. But it just goes yeah. to show who Mia wants to be connected to. She wants to be connected to the Grand Dame and she wants to be connected to Giselle. Um. <clears throat> Giselle says that she wants, and we get this new girl, Jackie. Giselle wants a young guy on her roster. Apparently, she has three guys that she's weaving in and out of, and um, she wants to add a young guy to that roster. And Go ahead, girl. I know your kids are going to roast you after this episode, but... um... Do you, boo. Do you. Not even mad. Uh, So then we get to... The outskirts of Miami. This Airbnb had a beautiful view of Miami Beach from across the way. <laughs> I went there. I know that area. That was cool. Mm. It's great. Love Miami. It's beautiful. Yeah, not that part. Um, so she says there's no more GVO, which was the last trip, which was good vibes only. It's going to be MIA. Missing it. Don't go missing in action. So the bedrooms were all named after stripper movies. That was and, fun. And shows. That was fun. Very in theme. Uh, but, girl, don't be sitting up here shading everybody's event and then you got this house because first of all not you put karen in like the maid closet like what are these rooms like then you give sharice a room with no bathroom because there was only what three bathrooms in the whole house like look it's not a bad house but it is a producer house they know there's going to be issues because there aren't enough bedrooms and there aren't enough bathrooms. So they want conflict. It's fine. But it was a nice house. It was cute for like four people. I would stay there. <laughs> yeah, we would stay there, just you and me. In, in the- but it's, I think it's cute for six people like that are willing to share a bathroom. Like, Yeah, a million percent. But like older women... I'm sorry. Like, I just, it's also a respect thing. Cause like I, we interviewed Sharice. She's older. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a respect thing. And not that Mia has that, but. But also there aren't a, a lot of, like a lot of rental houses, like don't necessarily have ensuite bathrooms in every bedroom. That is like not a regular thing. <laughs> Ronnie says, as much as I love Giselle, I don't think she has a roster. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I mean, I, I think 
<laughs> she might. I hope. I mean, is that like cool points to say you have a roster? I mean, you don't want to be the ever like I ain't got nobody on the roster. But do you want to be like the mom with three kids that's getting like smashed by three guys, and then you want to add a? Well, see, that's the thing. But when men say roster and when women say roster, that's two different things. Just because she has a roster doesn't mean she's fucking all of them. Doesn't mean she isn't. Well, <laughs> doesn't mean she's not she could be but like it is very plausible to have a roster of men that you're maybe only sleeping with one of them if at all because maybe she's choosing which one she'll sleep with but when she says she wants to add a young guy to me that's what made it a sexual thing because usually wants to add a young guy so she has some sex well, hopefully he ain't out here shoving needles in his dick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Ronnie says Mia is somewhat funny this season. I don't know if it's because the bar was low or if she's more fun this season. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's like, well, we're stuck with her, so <laughs> yeah, let's squeeze like what we can get. Because she kind of looks like a muppet and does weird oh. stuff. Throws salad. At Wait, people. did I pull? Like, did we do this last season? No. Wait. You, you know what Muppet she looks like. I mean, I I have what I have in my head of which Muppet she looks like. Um. Are you about to put a Muppet picture up on the screen? Wait, because I told you, I told you, <laughs> la- I told you last week that Madonna looks like um, Cynthia from Rugrats. You, yeah. Okay. We had that conversation, y'all. Okay, now just imagine this with black hair, though. <laughs> I mean, I can't see it, so... No, I know, I haven't... Because I, what is her name? Well, I don't know any uh-oh. of the Muppets' names, except Kermie and... Nope, Janice. Piggy. Janice. Janice. So, I'm gonna... No, no, don't look it up. I'm pulling it up right now. You can't tell me... We were clearly on the same page. <laughs> that that is not. I never knew that Muppet's name was Janice. So I just I found that out. Like, I remember she was in the band with Animal, but whatever. I know um, she was in the band. Yeah, she was in the band. All right, but yes, yeah, so I think that is why. So, all right, Sharice is gonna get a hotel room. Um, Robin and Giselle had a cute little situation. M- Mia's room was cute. Mia calls Peter and wants to bring the girls to his club, and this is what's going to spark the season off. Um, As we see next week, well, this week, Peter basically says, like, I don't fuck with Wendy, and then next week they go to the same bar club that he owns, and she's over talking to him. Bar one, honey. Bar one, she's over there talking to him. Wendy's looking like... Ooh, I don't want to have to say hi to him. I don't want to have to say hi to him. And again, first of all, Mia, like, stay out of people's business, which obviously that's the show. But like Wendy, <laughs> too, you always talking about, I got my, I dotted my eyes, crossed my T's, <laughs> did my Q's, and then you leave in knowing there's no way that, well, I could actually see Mia not telling them that they're going to bar one. I could actually see that happening. A million percent, actually, because just why would you not say, hey, my husband's not really 100 percent in on this. Like, could we just pause on the contract or what? Uh, Ronnie says, here's my thought. Giselle has thick skin, but I think Karen's comments last season of being the blank of Hampton University hurt her feelings. So she's acting cavalier sexually just to save face. Oh, I don't think that bothered her enough. I but think maybe. She does have to in, but I don't think she care. I think Giselle is a. I mean, Giselle was the ter- old church lady. Had a whole preacher husband in the black church that was sleeping around with the whole congregation. That hurt, I'm sure. But like all this other little petty stuff. At this point, she's just trying to get her money and live her life. I feel like Giselle don't care about none of these people. Yeah. Or what they. I agree. I agree. 
So what are you excited to see from next week? I mean, look, I, of course, don't support violence, especially when it's the black <laughs> women and, you know, violenting against each other. But I will say that the way that Mia tossed the drink at Wendy was just so damn smooth and cavalier. And it was so like, I feel like I'm watching Dynasty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like Diane Carroll is telling what's her face, fuck off, bitch, and just toss the glass. Like, cause it didn't seem like, I mean, I guess the glass broke. I don't know, but it just like splashed her in the face, like so elegantly. And she was just still sitting there, just like not giving a fuck at all. And it's, it's soap opera, you know, like I said that before, like our reality shows have become our soap operas Mm -hmm. because most of us, most of the soap operas are gone and very few of them. I mean, general hospital still on and I think one other one, but like nobody's really watching soap operas like they used to. And I was an avid soap opera fan. So I feel like that's why this works in my brain. The problem is, is that this is quote unquote real life. Right. So it looks really whack. But I literally put it in a soap opera category. And the way she tossed that shit at that girl face, I was just like, wow, I love it. I I, 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 I don't know what they're fighting about. I don't know why they're fighting. I cannot imagine that it's even remotely that important. But that was fascinatingly lovely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like, if I was directing a scene, the way that Mia was able to just, like, topple that glass. Like, she's done that shit before. Well, she did. Last year, she did it with lettuce. Well, she threw the... But she, like, that's lettuce. That's different. A whole glass in your hand, and you're able to do a splash in a bitch face, but, like, barely move the rest of your body. Like, all of you is just over here focused. Like, fuck her. It was just... It was well done. Well done. Fair enough. But trash. Yeah. But trash. But we love that. That's why we're here at, t- at 11 o'clock at night or midnight. Oh, my God. You guys, it's yeah. midnight where I'm at. And it's freezing cold. Um. All right. Well, that's it. Shout out to yeah. y'all watching. Shout out to y'all in the comments. Appreciate. Yeah. Love you guys. Um. The amount of viewers we had. And I need some more likes. Thank you. Uh, make sure you guys hit us up across the platform at Next Mood Swing. Courtney, where can everyone follow you? I'm all over social media at Stuart Starlet. Boom. Again, hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment. What was your favorite part? What do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about next week? Uh, And hit me up at DJ Jesse J. Until next week, same time, same place. Peace.